Hello, and welcome to Real Person Reviews. I'm Sam, and I'm a real person. And today I want to talk to you about uh, well, Splatoon 3 uh, side order. Uh, the, the, the DLC for Splatoon 3. Um, <clears throat> mostly I'm talking about this DLC mode in this area here. That's why that's on the screen, so you get the idea of we're talking more about this rather than some of the extras you get for getting the DLC stuff. This is the main thing you get for getting it. That's not just, like, in-game thingies. This is an actual you-can-do-stuff-in-it thing that's, like, a mode, and it's different. So I want to talk about this side order uh, DLC mode, which is kind of uncharacteristic of me to do, but um, I... I don't know. I, I just... I thought there was a lot to say here. I thought it was worth throwing this out here to add on. So, um, and it's been so long since the release of this anyways, that I'm like, you know what? It deserves its own video. It's worth looking at. And, uh, here's, here's what it is and, um, and why I think it's worth looking at. Um, the other thing to just keep in mind also quickly is that, uh, I'm assuming at this point, if you're looking at this, you obviously need to have the base game with Splatoon 3, so... I assume you know a lot of basics about Splatoon 3 gameplay, but um, the long and the short of it, if you want to just do a quick, a quick thing, if you're curious about this and you're like, do I really want to get the side order DLC? Um, if the idea of playing, uh, you know, do, doing like a, a rogue light uh, type of game with Splatoon mechanics, um, if that sounds good to you, and then uh, get it. You'll like this. That's basically what this is. But if you if you want to know a bit more, then uh, let's. Let's jump into this. So, <clears throat> Splatoon 3 side order. This DLC, basically, I don't want to spoil too much for, like, story things or whatever and all that. Uh, but I guess you're going to see gameplay and see stuff happening and stuff, too. But basically, the, the basic idea here is, like, uh, the premise is more or less that you go in and you're like, oh, you're sucked into this world where this memverse thing that was created. There's a whole backstory of why it was created, but it's like a, basically a virtual world that's like sucking in people's souls from the real world. And um, and it's kind of like this training ground, proving ground thing uh, with uh, an idea to basically work with stuff that was like in the DLC of like the Splatoon 2 DLC stuff. So it's a weird lore thing that I'll let you kind of sort out on your own. But... Um, in order to help everybody out here and stop this program that's going haywire and threatening people in the real world that's trying to basically take over the world and create an entire world that is uh, made of order uh, with, uh, without chaos, a world where things are just unchanging and bland and the same all the time. In order to stop this weird glitch in the programming of this virtual reality, um, you have to go and uh, venture up this tower floor by floor with a, with a pallet and then bring it to the control room at the top and uh, enter, the, you know, put the pallet into the control room. Do whatever the fuck you do with that. And uh, you just have to do that um, with uh, all of these pallets in order to uh, restore the program and save the world or whatever. That's the basic kind of idea. The game explains it better. You'll see. It's more interesting the way they present it. But that's kind of the basic plot premise thing of why you're doing this. The actual going up here to do this, uh, basically, so... You start off a run. Um, when you first start, you'll be just given the pallet you have to have. Um, but you'll start out, and uh, you're going up floor by floor. Like I said, this is a roguelite type of thing, so each floor. Um, before you go to the floor, you can pick from three different things. Um, and uh, which one of these things you pick will, you know, these are just kind of pseudo-randomized. So there's a floor type of, like, what you're going to be doing on that floor, what it looks like, and there's, like, um, different types of challenges to do on those floors, like... Uh, sometimes it'd be like destroying portals or trying to cover and defend splat zones or trying to escort uh, a turbine to the goal, um, defeating really fast enemies that are running away, these kinds of things. Um, also, there's a, a, a difficulty for each one, um, ranging anywhere from easy to rigorous. Um, and uh, you get some rewards based on the level of difficulty there. Um, and when you're picking these floors, also, each one will have a chip, a color chip associated with it that goes into your palette, which is just like a, I think it was like a big blank thing with a bunch of slots to put things into. There's 36 open slots, and every time you pick one of these floors, um, you get that chip to start that floor. 
Um, and these have a bunch of different kinds of things that they'll give you, like, uh, they're, they're separated into different, like, colors and categories. Um, so there's ships that can, you know, boost your attack damage, there are ships that are good for making you move around faster, there are ships that can, um, uh, give you lots of lucky drops, there's, there's different categories, I think they're, uh, main, what are they, like, they're like, uh, I think the categories are like, uh, like power, mobility, um, distance, no, range, that's what it is, power, mobility, range, support, Lucky and Drone, I believe, are the ones. And um, uh, so you can see what these chips kind of do. And then when you pick the floor, you'll get that chip for the floor to try and, you know, complete that challenge. Uh, if you do complete the challenge, then um, you get to keep that chip in your palette and you move on. And then you'll keep getting, you know, three different se selections for each floor that you're going up as you're progressing. Um and uh, you also get different kind of like money that you get during that as well. You can use these mem bucks as they're called. You can use those if you find vending machines or certain floors where you'll find a vending machine. And if you go to the vending machine, that counts as, you know, that's the entire floor is doing that vending machine. You go in there and you can like, there's things on selection that come up and you can buy things out of the vending machine. Um, and then uh, every 10 floors is a boss. Uh, and if you beat the boss, you'll get uh, a key to... Uh, open up uh, lockers in the main lobby. We'll, we'll cycle back to that in a sec. Um, and then, so you're going up and trying to see as far as you can get. You want to get all the way through all 30 floors to beat the final boss. And then if you do that, you, you get your palette. Um, I don't know if you get palette cleansed. I don't know if that's what they actually say or what you do with it. But you put the palette up there, you, you beat it with that palette because the goal is to beat it with all of these different palettes. Um, and obviously they're all just like going around, you know, putting a bunch of these chips in here. It doesn't really matter what chips you get as long as you beat it with your palette, which is a loadout of uh, a main weapon, a sub-weapon, and a special. And you also have, uh, each palette has a chip, um, like tone bias, where it is a primary tone bias, where it'll mostly get chips of that type. And it has a secondary tone bias, where like, you're still more likely to get that than other chips, but like this, you know, not as likely as the main one. Those are like, you know, the main and secondary bias for getting certain kinds of chips, um, color chips. I should maybe, you know, I'm saying a lot of things. It's a lot more complicated to, to hear than to actually, like, play and do. Um, and uh, then once you either, even if you fail a run, whether you win it or fail it, you'll go back to the main lobby area. And here's where um, you'll actually get, like, a number of uh, pearls um, for using upgrades and things for uh, basically it's the currency outside of that area or the mem bucks you only use in there and then they're converted to part of your score and overall score for all the stuff you do to come back and be part of pearls to spend here and here you can do a number of things to them there's a shop here with some exclusive items you can buy just there there's hacks you can get from marina um so you can you know uh give yourself a lot of like permanent upgrades that will go throughout your uh, successive runs um and uh, uh, you, uh, also there's the, uh, the lockers you can open with those keys that you get. Sometimes they'll have pearls in them. Some of them have bits of the, the uh, Marina's dev diary to give you like a bits of lore and more of the story going forward. And then uh, some of them will have more pallets in there. So you have more pallets you can obtain and use and try to beat these floors with. Um, and uh, you also can, as you uh, kind of have a bit of progression in the sense of, you know, beating... Um, being enough enemies, you'll get more intel on, like, info on, like, how to fight those enemies and what their, you know, strategies for, for battling them. Also, as you get these color chips, um, usually these all have, like, three pieces of info you can get. One for the first one, um, if you get three, you'll get another piece of info. If you can equip five of them in a run, you'll get another piece of info. Um, and it has a whole collection of showing you all those things, and, um... That's, you know, that's another thing you kind of like for progression. -y. Also, every time you get a new chip for the first time, you'll get uh, some pearls for that. Um, so uh, the other other thing to mention also is that throughout these, you also have, I uh, uh, Mar mentioned Marina, I mentioned pearls, and you're like, what about pearls? Is she here? She's actually this little robotic drone thing. She's been turned into that for this, and so she helps you do things like you can hover in, in, in the air, like slowly descend. Uh if you're, you know, when you're making bigger jumps, um, she can also, with certain power-ups and color chips, depending on what you do, she can actually get a lot of abilities and uh, uh, help you out during all your runs as well, you know, getting, being able to throw bombs or give you items, all this kind of stuff. 
And um, again, the, the main idea throughout this too is to um, the whole thing basically is to just see what kind of chips you get, what kind of builds you can do. Try to beat the 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 um, you know you get upgrades and stuff to make it easier, and try to beat it with every single pallet. That's really the goal. Pretty simple. Lots of little things you can kind of do to kind of pass the time and, and grind and all that during that. But that is the main goal: is to beat this this tower um, with every single pallet. Um, and I gotta say that I really, really like this. I think this is really, really fun. Again, I really like the the rogue light thing in general, and I think this has good gameplay. And I'm a sucker for doing more with the mechanics you already have. So I really like this, anyways, just in general as a thing to do. I also think it's just fun to go up and see what things do you get, you know, and sacrifices of like, do I want to go for like a harder floor, or do I want to go for like a better, like if I want a better reward. Or do I want to go for a certain kind of chip? How do I want to build my character right now? Do I want to get like a bunch of the same kind of chip? Or do I want to spread out for different kinds of chips? What chips will synergize with each other? And what chips will work with my weapon or my gameplay or my special? Um, do I do a vending machine if I want to like, you know, do like, oh, do I want to risk it there? See if I get something good there. Because I can get more stuff there, but they might not have what I want. You know, and the re-rolls and then going forward. And, like, there's a lot of like little decisions to make. Um, and um, it feels like, all the time you're going, you're pretty much always making some kind of progress as well. So whenever it feels like you're just like wasting time going through things, thanks to the way they have the roguelite stuff and their progression going on. Um, and I also super like that there's not like a simple like, oh, you just, you know, there's not like a build you go for. Like always go for these chips or something, right? Because because the, the way that certain chips build into each other, you could go for like, you know, totally different chips in multiple different runs and still end up with a really good build based on, again, your, your weapon or your sub-weapon or your specials and your play style. Um, and so there's, like, multiple ways to go through here and have a really successful run and still feel like it's really, like, cool and fun and interesting. Um, and I, I, I really like that. Um, I think there's a lot to... There's a lot of fun things to explore and keep it interesting and engaging. Um, and then just the the... The, the way they managed to take all these mechanics and just make them kind of, like, work together in a way that made me, like... I was never, like... I never really felt like I couldn't do this. I never felt like any weapon was, like, this is impossible. None of these pallets felt like I'll never be able to do this. Um, and I think that's a pretty cool thing where it's, like, what other ways... Like, almost the opposite of, like, what other ways can I play this so that I can try to make it different and see if I can still, like, get through it that way? It makes you want to experiment more and explore more and, like because of the limited space you have in your palette and because of like, hmm, how will this work? Like I'll build like this chip and these chips or like, you know, I'm gonna get a bunch of different chips or I'm gonna like, focus these couple of chips and get those really beefed up. Like what is that gonna affect all my different, you know, things that I have in my in my palette? Really cool. Um, there are also, I guess I didn't mention this before, there are also some danger floors that factor into that, danger floors and bonus floors. So what is added in here, whatever, you're here, we're here for it. The danger floor basically are really dangerous ones uh, that uh, add in extra stuff like, oh, the lights are out, or there's ink coating, or there's really strong enemies or something like that, right? Uh, so you might want to avoid those in this as well. You're like, well, I'm having this run, like, I don't want to risk doing that danger floor, especially if it's, like, no drone, and I was going to do, you know, my, my drone, I was going to max that out. I better not go there, right? Um, but there's also bonus floors, which will either give you an extra objective to get more points um, for a reward, or they may just like fill out the rest of your palette with a certain like a randomized chip tone or color or whatever so a certain type um for that round um so it's like maybe i want to risk doing that so i can maybe get that boost just for fun or try to get this extra challenge for some extra rewards um and so there's a lot of definitely like planning and there's a lot of risk versus reward uh, all that going on throughout this um and it's i mean it's a like I said, I think this is pretty, uh, it's been a pretty excellent time. I obviously really, really like it. As far as complaints go, let's start with that. Uh, <laughs> that little thing about danger floors. Some of those do feel kind of bullshit. There are a couple of those floors where they'll put multiple things on you. Or, or like, you know, just basically really screw you over. Because sometimes they're one detriment, sometimes they're two detriments. And I noticed that... Um, there are some floors where, like, basically, uh, they'll go up and be like, no drone and no items. They'll put both of those on me. And it's like, well, that sucks. Because if I was building for my drone, like, I did have this one time where I, I failed to run because I was building a bunch of drone ships with my with my umbrella, And then they threw that at me. And it was like, well, I don't have any drone now. So, like, all of the drone ships that I put in are worthless 
because my drone isn't here and um there's no they there's no item drops i can get even from like building up that lucky chain of you know defeating enemies and the chain builds up and so you can get items to drop i can't do that either um maybe i should have explained that in the other part also if you do feed a bunch of enemies a lucky chain happens and you can have a higher chance of these items dropping that could refill your special or your ink or uh, little bombs that could come out, that kind of stuff. But if you have both of those things deactivated and you've only got chips, you know, in your drone or just chips in your luck stat, you're, you're screwed. Like, there's, there's, there's like, no chance that you're going to get any help on this now. Like, so, like, that and also floors where they decide to give me um, both stronger enemies, which means that they do more damage and they're faster, along with the barrage thing where it's like a bunch of those little things that float around and can like blow up on you and kill you. Basically, like they're just little f slow floating suicide bombers. Those guys come in like super strong and fast. I've never, I don't think I've ever beaten one of those floors where I have to kill everybody, like, unless it's like a destroy the portals thing because they're just flying there and it's like. Those things can touch. One of those touches you. Your your everything's broken. Another one touches you. You're dead. I had one actually hit me, and I was floating down after getting bounced up into the air, uh, with my armor broken. And one of those hit me in midair, and I died. It was like there's no. Some of these things are just too hard, depending on your build. So I guess you could say avoid danger floors with these builds. But even something like that, no matter how I built for that, I don't think I could even really do that, unless it was one of those portal floors where you destroy all the portals where enemies are coming out of. Right. So like. Um, yeah, I, whew, uh, yeah, uh, definitely there are some things that are kind of a little too hard. Also, grinding for some of these chips to get them maxed out is dumb. They don't do anything other than give you that info and you get a badge for each one, I guess. But some of them are, like, so specific. You need to have only certain weapons can use them. There are a couple of them that are so goddamn specific. There's one for the Splatana, and there's one for the for the Brella that you can only get for those weapons. Only those can get them, but at the same time, they're outside of their tone bias, so you have no way to reliably get them. You just have to get super lucky to get them. So it's really not worth grinding to 100%, really, unless you just really like it like I do and you're hoping for it, and then it's just frustrating because at that point you're not really making progress towards really anything else if you got everything else done and you're just trying to get that. Um, that can be kind of uh, frustrating. And also the general thing of, like, there's only so many bosses to fight, there's only so many floors to see. Eventually you'll kind of will have seen everything, and you're not going to be playing this forever. Um, you're going to be playing this for probably a good chunk. You're going to finish everything, put it down, and it's something you probably won't even come back to till a while down the line if you want to boot it up later again and be like, you know what, I want to restart this from the beginning or just do another run or something. That's not the kind of thing that's going to keep you, you know, coming back as much as, like, the online will just kind of keep you playing and playing and playing uh, a lot more than, like, this will. That being said, I do think side order is pretty important for this very reason. It's not tied to the online. It's something that you can just play whenever you want to play it, right? Um, like, you don't need to be playing this with other people. It's a solo thing to play. So you don't really need those other people online. And um, that's going to be a big thing, especially once inevitably a Splatoon 4 comes out. Oh man, well, why would I want to go back to Splatoon 3 if nobody's playing online? There's the main campaign and the main game, but this can add a lot of gameplay to it as well. Even though it's his DLC, you'll have to get it later. Um, and that's kind of where we have to bring up the, the recommendations and the price, right? This pack is like $25, which seems kind of steep for DLC. I think $20 would have been an easier sell. Um, I mean, I loved this. This is probably worth $25 to have this, to be able to do this whenever. I think so. But the thing is... Um, you don't really need to rush into it unless, I mean, you really want to play it. sounds really awesome. I mean, go ahead. It's, it's good. Um, I recommend. But the thing is, like, you also have to consider that this, since it isn't tied to the online, there's no rush to get it, right? It's going to be available to buy for a while, and I don't know how often DLC goes on sale for these things, but um, maybe, the, maybe it does. Maybe the bundles do. I don't know. But you might be better off just waiting for a price drop or waiting till 
it potentially just becomes part of the you know Nintendo Switch expansion pack if you're already you know subscribing to that for other reasons or other things. Um, they eventually put the Splatoon 2 DLC as part of that as well, so they might actually put this on there. I don't know. Eventually, if a Splatoon 4 comes out, maybe that'll be a thing that they do to entice more people to get that expansion pack. I don't know. It doesn't hurt to wait. And that's the thing. is like, well, it's probably worth it, and definitely it's going to keep this thing from just being, you know, a thing you never pick up. Like, first Splatoon, is there much reason to play that? I guess, I guess the campaign. Splatoon 2 has a pretty similar campaign. So, like... This helps give this a bit more of a reason to keep it around post the online scene, right? Post Splatoon 4, I guess, you know, when that's out. Because um, I assume that's going to eventually be a thing at some point. I don't know if it's going to be soon, but, you know, it's a thing that is probably going to happen in the future. So, while it's just worth it, I don't know that you need to jump on it unless you're really excited to play it. And, uh... Obviously, yeah, I liked it so much that I decided to do a rare review of a piece of DLC rather than just the whole game. Um, I don't do it often. This was good enough where I thought it warranted it. So I guess that's probably a little bit telling of like, hey, he reviewed DLC. It's probably good. It has to be pretty bad for me to be like, hey, guys, this is the DLC I try out. Don't play it. It sucks. But uh, tell me what you guys think uh, of, uh, you know, Side Order. For Splatoon three, what, what what do you what do you think? What do you, if you played it already? You know what what are your thoughts? Um, you know, good and bad. What do you what were some of your favorite palettes or like builds or some cool things that happened during your runs of this? It would be I think really fun to swap stories from the from the this. So <laughs> um, yeah, uh, that, I think that I think that's it. I'm probably not gonna do a review. Uh, another review on Splatoon 3, unless they put out some other really interesting thing. Um, and uh, I guess I'll, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't think I have anything to add, I guess. There, see? I sp uh, there. I still have it. I still have the box. I didn't get anything special for this. I don't know what else to say. Oh, yeah, one other thing. Uh, Marina's back. That's probably worth $25 alone, is that Marina is, is back in the game now. And so I have a banner with Marina on it, and I have a Marina sticker, and um, I... Oh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. If that doesn't sell you on it, then nothing will, because you're obviously a, a godless, soulless robot who doesn't understand love. <laughs>